السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الهدى قادة التقى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وقال الله تبارك وتعالى وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا صدق الله العظيم وعن أبي أمامة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اقرأوا القرآن فإنه, ي... فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters <coughs> We are but a couple days away perhaps From the beginning of a very blessed month The month of Ramadan I quoted an ayah of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this month by name in the Quran The only month to be mentioned The only one place in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. And it is absolutely virtuous. There is no doubt about it. There is no second thought. There is no debate regarding its, its virtue and its, its uh, preference over the other months and, and, and throughout the year. But what I want to highlight and what I want to bring to my attention and your attention today is what makes this month so virtuous. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? that gives this month the value that it has and the importance that it has. Is it the fact that you and I are fasting in this month? Is it the fact that you and I, mostly majority of the people give charity in this month, their zakat, they take out their zakat in this month? Is it the fact that you and I spend more time in the masjid during this month? Is this what makes this month so virtuous? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question himself in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, which month is this? What, which, month, which month is this month of Ramadan? الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ And those who understand the Arabic language or those who are students of the Arabic language will appreciate, will understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say أَنزَلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ or أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ That the month of Ramadan in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an The month of Ramadan in which we reveal the Qur'an That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ The month in which the Qur'an was revealed. To take the spotlight, the highlight away from the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and solely focus on the book of Allah, on the Qur'an. Had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ أَلَّذِي أَنزَلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Or أَنزَلْنَا فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an in this month. The spotlight, the highlight, the virtue, the, the, the main point, the point of discussion would become Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that did this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the one that granted this month the virtue. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and I to focus on something more important. And the important fact is, this month is blessed and is virtuous. It is known as the month of Ramadan because the Quran is connected to this month. It has a connection to the Qur'an. That is why this month is great. That is why this month is amazing. And so beautifully somebody said that any time a, any time a person connects himself or herself to the Qur'an, anything that is connected to the Qur'an, that individual, that thing, that month, that time, that land, everything becomes amazing. Everything becomes amazing. And perhaps I quoted this before once. You look at the, the, the earth, the, the, the land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. You and I agree that the most blessed of places in the entire earth is Makkah al Mukarramah, where the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. What is the reason why this is the most blessed of places? The Quran was revealed. The most blessed of months, why is it the most blessed of months? The Quran. The most, uh, the, the most virtuous ummah, the most virtuous ummah, the Prophet ﷺ was told in the Quran, Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummah. 
You, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you are the best of ummah. You are the best of the followers. Why are you the best of ummah? Because you have been blessed with the Quran. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the angel Gabriel, Jibreel, is known as the best of the creation from amongst the malaika. What makes him so great? What, what got him this position? Nazala bihi ruhul amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Nazala bihi ruhul amin. The Quran came with this blessed angel. This angel was used to deliver the Quran. Hence, the maqam and the position of this angel became the highest. My brothers and sisters, if you and I were to attach ourselves to the Quran, if you and I were to attach our, our, ourselves to the Quran, this is the promise from the Quran and the Hadith that you and I would, would become the most beloved and the best in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet said, Khayrukum man ta'allam al Quran wa allama. The best amongst you are those who learn the Quran, who teach the Quran, who recite the Quran. They are the best. There is no second category. I quoted a hadith in the beginning. The Prophet said, Abu Mama radiallahu anh says, I heard the Prophet saying, Iqra'u al-Quran. Oh my friends, oh my brothers, oh my sisters, oh my followers. The Prophet is saying, Iqra'u al-Quran. Recite the Quran. Why should you recite the Quran? فَإِنَّهُ يَتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِيَصْحَابِ On the day of judgment, when you and I will be standing alone in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this Quran will come as an intercessor for you and I. This Quran will testify on behalf of you and I that no, this individual used to recite me. This one, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with this individual. He, he would frequently hold me, he would frequently recite me. How will the Quran speak? That's a separate discussion. The ulama also discussed that. That's not the point of discussion today. It will testify on behalf of you and I, give testimony to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this individual is a believer, this individual had love for the Quran. Now this month, there are a lot of things to do in this month. There are great things to do in this month. As I mentioned last week, we've previously, previously discussed the, the philosophy and the concept of this month of Ramadan. And in short, in a minute, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and I to increase our ibadat in this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, you and I to increase our forms of worship in this month. And not just any forms of worship. You and I can say, me going out, working, earning for the sake of my family, for, I need to provide for my wife and kids. This is also obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So should I increase in my work? Should I work overtime? This is also obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. The, the categories of ibadat and worship are two types. One is a direct form of ibadah, worship, and then there is one which is ibadah, ghayru maqsuda. They are not the intended form of ibadah, but it leads to an ibadah. It leads to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It leads to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but, but it itself is not the maqsud. It is not the intent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and I to increase in those actions, those forms of ibadat, which are maqsuda which are intended, which are direct forms of ibadah. So we are instructed to fast. We are instructed to perform the optional night prayers, extra prayers in the night. Allah subhanahu wa says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al-Quran, recite the Quran. And from amongst the best things that you, that you and I can do in this month is to recite the Quran. Is to recite the Quran. This is one of the best things that you and I can do in this month besides the other actions that we are doing. I want to focus. How much Qur'an should we recite? What is considered a good recitation of the Qur'an? The Tabi'un, they questioned the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Those who, who met the companions of the Prophet sallallahu they asked the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa all the companions, when, how often do you recite the Qur'an? Meaning, how often do you complete a recitation of the Qur'an? And they would say, Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa how much Qur'an should I recite? He said, complete once a month. They said, I can do more than that. So the Prophet ﷺ said, recite it once a week, complete it once a week, and don't do more than that, once a week. And in some narrations, we also learn that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, yani we learn the dislike of the Prophet ﷺ for somebody to recite the entire Qur'an in less than three days. If someone were to recite the entire Qur'an in one day, two days, this is disliked according to some narrations of the Qur'an, and the scholars agree upon this. These are, these are sahih and, and authentic narrations. So Habar radiallahu anhu say, we would, we would split the Qur'an into seven sections. On the first day, we would recite the first three surah, the first three chapters. Then, then the next five, then seven, then nine, then eleven, and then thirteen. Six days are gone, and then on the seventh day, we, will, we, we, we would complete the remaining. 
So we start off with three, Surah Baqarah, starting from there. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, six days. And on the seventh day, they would, they would complete the Quran. But then we also find narrations where it is coded great Sahaba, the likes of Uthman radiallahu anh, the likes of Tamim al-Dari radiallahu anh, would recite the Quran, entire Quran, in one day, in one night. Now the question arises, the question arises, we just quoted the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu where they disliked that a person recites the entire Quran in less than three days. What is the reasoning for this? The reasoning for this is you and I will recite the Quran in less than three days, we will run through it, we will zoom past it. We won't focus on the messages of the Quran. We won't focus on the on the uh, on the wants of the Quran. What is Allah? What, what is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala telling you and I? What does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala want from you and I? We will merely just read the words and just just you know go go through it without focusing, without concentration, without tadabbur, tafakkur, without contemplating on the words of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So this was dislike. But then when it came when it came to the month of Ramadan, authentic narrations from the Sahaba radiyallahu anhu. The Sahaba themselves will recite the entire Quran in one night. So the ulama explain this, and they say, if a person were to make this a habit, when this companion, Abdullah bin Amr an, is asking the Prophet وسلم, how often should I recite the Quran? It is not the situation like you and I, where we pick up the Quran only in the month of Ramadan. Na'udhu billah. That wasn't the situation. He wasn't asking the Prophet وسلم, that the month of Ramadan is coming, how much should I recite? The Prophet ﷺ was not advising him exclusively for the month of Ramadan, that only in the month of Ramadan recited once a week. No, this was his daily practice, his yearly practice, every day, every week of the year, every month of the year. This is what they would do. So the narrations that, dis, that, that, that show somewhat dislike of completing the Quran in less than three days refers to those individuals who make it a habit that they are frequently reciting, you know, and, and finishing every... And again, what's the purpose? Now, and you may ask, if a person is reciting the Qur'an so frequently, why would it be disliked? Why would it be disliked for a person to recite so much Qur'an? If that person has the time, if that person has the capability, Alhamdulillah. But what happens is you make a habit, you make this your daily routine, your, 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 your weekly routine, your monthly routine, and what happens now, you are, you are somewhat, uh, you possibly, not paying attention to the other obligations that Allah SWT has kept upon you. You time, if a person were to spend reciting the entire Quran in two nights, two days, how long it would take that individual? How many hours it would take that individual? Whereas you and I are obligated by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to do other things as well. We have, we, we have spouses, we have children, we have family, we have friends, we have parents. We need to fulfill their rights as well. If a person were to dedicate just for this, the other obligations will not be fulfilled. So it is this like, yes, but when the month of Ramadan came, we, we understand and we learn. And again, I'm pointing this out because we need to exert ourselves. We need to push ourselves in this month. Qatada radiallahu anh, there is narrated regarding him that he would recite the Quran every three days, every three days in the month of Ramadan. Every three nights he would, he would finish the Quran for the first 20 days. And then when it came the last 10 nights, in the last 10 nights, he would recite the Quran every night. Once every night. And this shows us that it is up to you and I to exert ourselves. So again, I want to conclude and I want to emphasize, this month is the month of the Quran. This month is a month to recite the Quran. If we are to do something in this month, if we are to do anything in this month, I advise you, my brothers and sisters, and I, and I, and, and I advise myself, spend as much time as you possibly can with the recitation of the Quran. Indeed, we have many other obligations upon us. Indeed, we do. But the philosophy of the month of, uh, of Ramadan is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like for you and I to increase in direct forms of ibadat. And the form of ibadat to get the nearness and the closeness, closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the recitation of the Quran. This month of Ramadan is blessed because the Quran is connected to it. I quoted an ayah of the Quran in the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ He quotes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will file a complaint with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will say, Ya Rabb, O my, o, o my Lord, inna qawmi, my people, my followers, ittakhadu hadhul Qur'an mahjura. They left the Qur'an. They deserted the Qur'an. They didn't fulfill the rights of the Qur'an. They didn't pay attention to the Qur'an. Now the scholars will explain and of course they do say, it is referring to those who, who, who disbelieve in the Qur'an. 
The majority opinion is, these are referring to those uh, uh, people of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ who didn't believe in him. There's, yani, if you want to, Ummah doesn't only refer to those who believe in the Prophet ﷺ. There's Ummah Ijaba, those who accept it, and there's Ummah Da'wa. Ummah Da'wa is everybody whom the message of Islam was, was given to. Everyone is considered a part of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. Some accepted, some didn't accept. The Prophet ﷺ will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, My Ummah, some people from my Ummah, some people from my followers, some who received my message didn't accept my message. They deserted it. They left it to the side. But then there are also some scholars of hadith. They say, no, this can also refer to, and perhaps it also refers to, those who believe in the Prophet ﷺ, those who believe in the Quran to be the book of Allah, yet they don't fulfill the rights of the Quran. They leave the Quran to the side. How beautifully somebody said, perhaps Shaykh Sunnah Mullah Hafizahullah said in one of his statements, he said, the Quran is for yourself, not for your shelf. The Quran is for yourself, not for your shelf. If we leave it to the shelf, mahjura. We have deserted it, we have left it, we have secluded it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you and I to give up everything and just dedicate our entire time to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not what he wants. La sarura ta fil Islam. There is no rahbaniya. There is no such thing as you secluding yourself, isolating yourselves from society, just staying away and just doing Allah, Allah in a corner without having ta'alluq in social life. No such thing in Islam. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does want from you and I in this particular month is that we turn and we strive and we work hard. You would find the scholars of the past, and I conclude with this inshallah, you will find the scholars of the past if you wanted to speak to them, if you wanted to meet them, if you wanted to spend time with them, perhaps it would be possible for you outside of the month of Ramadan. But when the month of Ramadan came, they excused themselves. They excused themselves. You wanted some time, you wanted a few moments with the pious, with the Salaf of Salihin, with the pious predecessors in the month of Ramadan, you would have to fight for your time. It would be very difficult. Why? They understood. The month of Ramadan comes, the riwayah of, of Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, he says, the Prophet said, in the month of Ramadan, when the month of Ramadan starts, the angels call out, Ya baghi al khair aqbil. All those who seek good, advance, move forward. And those who seek evil, those whose habits are, 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 are against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least stop in the month of Ramadan. At least stop for this month. The angels call out. We don't hear it, but the announcement is made. Ya baghi al khair, aqbil. All those who desire good, those who desire the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is your chance. Move forward. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need Allah to be pleased. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just needs a little bit from you and I to be pleased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to spend maximum time in this month reading, listening, understanding, contemplating over the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this is rewarding. Reciting the Quran is, re is rewarding. Listening to the Quran is, is rewarding. The Prophet sallallahu said to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, Abu Musa, law, law ra'itani, if only you had seen me last night, I was listening to your Quran attentively. I was listening to your recitation of the Quran so attentively. It was so beautiful the way you're reading. He was mesmerized by the recitation of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa allow us to maximize our, our, our time in this month to, to read the Quran, to listen to the Quran, to understand the Quran, to sit in the gatherings of the Quran so that you and I can also please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, gain His pleasure, and inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this month a means of our entrance into Jannah. Ameen wa akhidu da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الحمد لله الحمد لله ذي الجلال والإكرام جعل رمضان أفضل شهور العام اللهم ربنا لك الحمد آمنا بك وبملائكتك وكتبك ورسلك واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت رضينا بك ربه وبالإسلام دينا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبدك ونبيك وخاتم رسلك فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين أما بعد فأوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل قال تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أيها المؤمنون بعد أيام قليلة نستقبل شهر رمضان المبارك فاللهم بلغنا هذا الشهر الكريم وأهل علينا هلالة باليمن والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام فإنه شهر عظيم شهر خير وبركات تفتح فيه أبواب الجنات قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا جاء رمضان فتحت أبواب الجنة وذلك لما فيه من كثرة أبواب الطاعات وتنوع العبادات ومضاعفة الحسنات ومغفرة السيئات 
فيا باغي الخير أقبل فإن شهر الخير أقبل أوقاته ثمينة وأيامه معدودة قال تبارك وتعالى أياما معدودات فالسعيد من استثمرها وبالقربات عمرها فصام نهاره وقام ليلة ابتغاء وجه ربه وطلبا لمغفرته قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان وقامه إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه عباد الله إن من أعظم ما نغتنم به أوقات رمضان تلاوة القرآن وسماعه وتدبره فرمضان شهر القرآن قال سبحانه شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن ودل الناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وقد كان صحابة رضي الله عنهم يحكفون على كتاب ربهم تلهج ألسنتهم بذكر خالقهم يبتغون بذلك الأجر ومغفرة الذنوب والشفاعة عند علام الغيوب قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصيام والقرآن يشفعان للعبد يوم القيامة يقول الصيام أي رب منعته الطعام والشهوات بالنهار فشفعني فيه ويقول القرآن منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه قال فيشفعان فاللهم بلغنا رمضان وأعنا فيه على الصيام والقيام وتلاوة القرآن وبارك لنا في أيامه ولياليه ووفقنا, جن ووفقنا جميعا لطاعتك وطاعة رسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب وخطيئة فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أجزل المثوبة للصائمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين أيها المؤمنون إن رمضان شهر عمل ونشاط ونجاحات وإنجازات ينظم فيه الصائم أوقاته ويعزز صلته بربه بالمحافظة على صلاته قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خمس صلوات افترضهن الله من أحسن وضوءهن وصلاهن لوقتهن وأتم ركوعهن وخشوعهن كان له على الله عهد أن يغفر له ويبادر الصائم إلى إدخال السرور على المحتاجين وبذل الخير للناس أجمعين كما يحرص على تقوية علاقته بأسرته هذا وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة الأكرمين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم سلمنا لرمضان وسلمه لنا وتقبله منا اللهم عينا فيه على طاعتك وحسن عبادتك اللهم ارحم المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الإسلام والمسلمين واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل الإسلام والمسلمين ولا تجعلنا منهم ولا معهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلا هيا على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سو اعتدلوا سو صفوفكم فإن تسوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاة Please make sure lines are straight no gaps in between Please stand shoulder to shoulder الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداع إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين على قوة المتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من القاسرين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأمراض اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى واجعل آخرتنا خير من الأولى اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك وغضبك والنار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من سوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاءة نقمتك وجميع سخطك ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وعن برحمتك